Okay, the first question um, that came in, uh, what are your thoughts on characters like uh, Garage and Maeve? Is that correct? Shadow Song? I, I pronounce her Maeve, but you know what they say. Maeve, yeah. Uh, what are my thoughts on... on uh, um, well, like with most uh, Warcraft uh, characters, there's many layers to them. That's one thing that's always been terrific about this world. Um, the characters aren't usually just black and white, you know, good and bad, good or bad. Um, Garage, Garage um, while many people dis, dislike him, I, I, I know, um, I can see where his motivations come from. You know, he's, and uh, you can see, he's, in some ways, he's trying to do the best he can for his people, although his uh, notions of it may be differ from others on that. And uh, Maeve, Maeve is a character very, very complex. She has been a person very loyal to her duty over the many, many millennia. And um, that's caused her to have to do some nasty things and suffer some nasty things. So that that can leave a mark on you. And uh, so you know you can see you can see where that would uh, that would change her change her as it might not change other people, and that uh, she, that uh, she might surprise people with what, what choices she makes in the future. Cool. Um, and how involved uh, was Blizzard in entertainment with uh, writing Wolfheart? They were very involved, as they always are. Um, they basically approach you know, myself or, or Christy, whichever the case is, uh, with a subject that they want to uh, see in book form so that it, that it coincides with some new big event in the game or, or it explains something that's very significant to the game. And uh, in this case, they said, you know, they wanted to talk about Varian, but it wasn't just about Varian and his, and his uh, tr- struggles, both inward and outward, but also some of the other situations that that are tied to that struggle, and also what else is happening in that world at large. And so, you know, they made some suggestions on what they wanted to see. I wrote a synopsis based on that, and then I passed it back to them. They liked some of the stuff that I included in there that they hadn't thought about, and so we went in different directions on different things. And so basically, we went back and forth a few times until we got a synopsis that was uh, very satisfactory to all of us. Uh, I have a good group of people there, not just, you know, Chris Metzen, obviously, uh, is big over there, but also Nick Nielsen, uh, the, the publishing lead, and who's also written some of the comic stuff, and also James Wall is very important there, too, and then the whole group of people, especially the lore people, too, because they always have to have a hand in this, you know, to make sure things are flowing properly. But uh, there's a good hand, you know, everything I do is always done with their approval, and, uh, you know, sometimes they, they want to change things that are taking place in the story because... Let's face it, World of Warcraft has grown so much, so got so much depth. It's a heck of a different thing than orcs and humans ever was now. Um, so I, I'm and I'm very pleased with their feedback because, you know, I've worked for other projects where sometimes I always felt like I was left alone in the dark. Um, but you can I can never say that about Blizzard. Um, they have been very, very helpful all along the way. Right, and, and expanding on that, did uh, Blizzard make changes to the plot you wanted in, or did Blizzard give you any sort of basic plot? Uh, basically, how much uh, say, flexibility do you have in the creative design process? They gave me, they gave me a, a good amount of uh, input into the creative design, as they always do. They want, they want to have that, that, uh, that back and forth with uh, the authors like Christy and myself. Uh, I made some I made some suggestions that was not was not originally what they had thought about, and they realized that those would work well better in, in what they were looking for. So they were very happy to take those. In fact, they some of the stuff they they thought that worked well enough that they wanted me to expand that more than I had planned to. So they they're 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 not they're not so they're not wanting to say we want to strictly write this thing. They want to see what I can show what I can give back to them. And to see how I can help make their make their notions grow to something even more interesting, and uh, I, uh, I think with with Wolfheart we really had a good combination there between uh, Blizzard and myself in uh, getting a, a, a novel that people would really enjoy reading. Right. Uh, um, a few years ago, um, we'd asked you if you'd be interested in writing a uh, story based on the dark fantasy vibe of Oregon, and uh, this is it, Wolfheart. Um, are you happy with the direction Wolfhart ended up with as an author, or do you feel uh, you can give the Worgen another shot? I am definitely happy with what I was able to do with the Worgen in this particular episode. We needed to uh, introduce some situation facts that people have been have been curious about, 
and uh, also you know and how they and how they interacted with the situation involving Varian and the alliance. And uh, so I'm very happy because I was able to, to uh, not only just clarify those things, but also uh, make me draw the situation into uh, the final results at the end of the book and uh, leave open things for further on that Blizzard is doing. Um, you know, I, you know I, there's more I would like to do. I'd like to show some of uh, Kilnius because I, and, you know, and how that has been an effect on the Oregon. Um, and uh, I mean, I, the Oregon are, ter- are terrific. I would not mind uh, doing much more with them, a lot more with them. I and mean, I'd like to see a little bit more of what Gen's like inside, because you know he's obviously gone through a few things and made some really bad mistakes that he's regretting. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Derek Shadow's song. Uh. He said they lived in the wild for nearly ten thousand years. Uh. Where exactly did he live with his wife at? The exact location we have kept uh, um, not mentioned because uh, there's, you know, I, I know that they hope to uh, do some other stuff in the future. But um, basically, for the most part, he's tried to live in seclusion uh, in places in the, uh, far, that are still forested, but but away from a lot of people. He's at, I mean, he and his wife had interaction uh, with outsiders. There's no doubt about that. And um, what some of those interactions may have turned out. Uh, something that for past future stories, but uh, he he was hit very hard. he was really hit very hard by all the events of the, of the uh, War of the Ancients and what he saw of his people after that. It was just very overwhelming to him, and he just basically had to get away from it all, literally. And so that's uh, so he he tried so he went to where he could, he could hopefully find some peace uh, inside himself, and uh, fortunately he had. Uh, Someone who loved him very much and who was able to help him in that respect. Uh, so that's like I said, we kept, we kept the actual location in, but I can guarantee you he was in seclusion for a lot of that time and not worried about that one bit. Because uh, he, his memories really, really were burned into him from all, from all the deaths and all the fighting and uh, the situations that came afterward. Hmm. That's very interesting. Um... Uh, moving on to uh, uh, Maeve again. Uh, a, a lot of Maeve fans. Th- th- this question is, has a lot of controversy uh, behind it uh, with the community, I guess, because there's a lot of Maeve fans that are pretty upset with uh, uh, what happened with that character. Uh, um, and the uh, person asked, whose idea was it to turn Maeve to the quote unquote soon to be raid boss side? I think that, that calling her a soon-to-be raid boss is kind of, you know, not giving her credit for a lot of things and, t- and not taking her story, um, the depth of her story, to, to what they should be. Um, Blizzard was the one who originally considered having her her, her go the direction she does, uh, and for a good reason. Um, she, as I said, she's been through a lot of situations, hell of situations. And so that um, you know that said, there are reasons why she would end up doing what she did. I tried to get you know I tried to show those reasons as they as uh, as a good as good uh, why you know she would um, ever you know change from what some people think she might be. I mean when you go, when you've been when you've been through torture and been through uh, all that bloodshed and everything. It's going to bother you. I mean, look, her brother was affected a different way, but he didn't go through some of the things she did. So, um, the the original notion was was Blizzard's, um, but I definitely agree with the direction they chose. Uh, I think she's going to be a more complicated character than a simple raid boss. I mean, yes, the game may use her in some respect to that, but um, I would not be surprised if we yeah, hear from her. And and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying anything that I know for sure, but. I would not be surprised if we would see her again in the novels and learn a little right. bit more about how she's been changed by everything. She's not a black and white character. None of the characters are in Warcraft are black and white, but she she's a very complex character. I mean, she's uh, probably actually in some ways uh, probably one of the most complex. Right. Um, okay. Very cool. Um, who's your um, who's your favorite characters in Wolfheart and why? There are a number of characters I'm really fond of, but I, but um, maybe if I list just a couple of them, the top ones. Uh, Varian obviously was a favorite of mine. Um, 
since I had got to delve with him finally. I've been following along this character for a while. And it was great to be able to work on this inner struggle, and uh, Borgen was very happy how that turned out. Um, because, you know, he, you know, he, has, he obviously is going to be great, of great significance if he can get to pull his head together to the Alliance and to the world as a whole. And uh, so, and so the, getting him through his situation, getting him to where he needs to be, at least in, for, in terms of this particular storyline, uh, that was, um, that was very, very fascinating to me. Um, I have to say, uh, Garash was, was very interesting too because I, you know, um, I, he actually had more fa- facets to him than I realized. And, you know, I guess, as, as I said, while he uh, um, may be a character that a lot of people are not too crazy about in one respect, you can see why he's doing what he is. You can see that there's a dedication to a cause he believes is the right one. Uh, and one last character is, I'd have to mention, uh, very happy with Jared Shadowsong. I, really, I was really happy when I was told I could bring him back. Uh, he was a creation of mine for the War of the Ancients. I got to ro- watch him rise up in that particular trilogy, and to bring him back was a great pleasure to me, and I hope to use him again. Yeah. Um, how, how does the uh, Highborn feel about reintegrating with the Night Elf Society, and uh, how do both factions feel about each other in Wolfheart? Um, the Highborn are doing what they do out of necessity, which is about what, what they only do. Uh, they, they, don't, they wouldn't do this if they were, were forced to, in my opinion. That's that's frequent event. But uh, they're not crazy about the way they do it. But uh, their leaders see the necessity. Most of them see the necessity. Others are not so thrilled with the matter. Um, obviously, the uh, the highborn and uh, those they are trying to integrate with are not going to see eye to eye on a lot of things. And so this is a situation that's going to take a long time if you know to to uh, come together. And there's going to, I imagine, um, in addition to what's happening in Wolfheart, where you can see how they're having trouble coming together, how there's a lot of distrust and old en- en- enmities in- involved, um, I think that um, this, this is something that's going to be ongoing for a while. And given your um, previous uh, direct depictions of uh, orcish characters in the past, how do you feel about Garage Hellscream? Um, what image do you have? Did you have in mind when you portrayed Garrosh in your work, and does he uh, fantas- uh, fascinate you as a character overall? I've made some little mention of him earlier in one of the other answers, but again, I have to emphasize definitely that um, Garrosh is more complex than, than people realize. Uh, yeah, I can see where people would have trouble with him, uh, his personality and such there, and uh, what he's fine doing because. You know, he's trying to basically, but he's also living in thrall shadow, and I think that's something that kind of strikes him a little bit harder than it should. Or, you know, and so he's going to make decisions that that uh, characters and readers are not necessarily going to like. Uh, but that doesn't mean that he isn't trying that in, he isn't trying to do some things he believes are the right thing for the horde. And uh, so, I think he's a very, uh, I think he's a very fascinating character, and I think that. Um, that um, we're going to see some more interesting de- decisions by him in the future um, that um, could show could show the world going in directions that we don't necessarily realize is going right now. Great. Um, given uh, your your writing style and history, uh, what did Blizzard initially ask you to write, and how did you decide to expand upon it? Right. We've kind of gone over a little bit about this. Yeah, but right. um, this is a little, a little bit of a different question, I guess. Um, they uh, the, originally there was a more focus on a couple of elements in the book, um, but uh, then as the synopses went back and forth, uh, Blizzard Blizzard wanted to uh, stretch the uh, different plots more so we, so we can see how they interweave with each other. Um, the um, I think the storyline benefits from those changes that, that came about, because uh, you know nobody nobody is is truly isolated in this world, and so what goes on with with certain characters like Varian um, are going to be touched by other things going on with other characters, even if peripherally at first, and uh, all the all the ties together to the to the strength and the survival of the alliance, and on the other hand the the horde. So I think that so. Like I said, the book really grew um, 
from the original notions, and uh, again, I think to its benefit. Great. Um, actually, the last question I have here, um, and uh, someone wanted to know: Have you continued to play the game after all these years and, and the expansions? Oh yeah, I've, I've enjoyed playing the, the game for a long time. Uh, I especially like the stuff of Cataclysm. Uh, that's been one of my favorite expansions, I think. Uh, of course, the part of it has to do with the fact that they're a worgen now, because I've always been a big right, right. Yeah, so, uh, so would you say Cataclysm is so far your favorite expansion out of all of them? I actually would say so, yeah, I really would. And that's saying a lot, because there were some good ones, and I really thought Wrath of the Lich King was a good one. Um, I would have probably said that one, you know, or the other one. But, but I, like, I really like the well, Cataclysm, because it's opened up a lot of new things that I have enjoyed. Um, and I really like Gilnius as a starting area now, because I always like that pseudo-Victorian sort of look to it. And, and um, right now I'm playing a, a Worgen Mage. I like to say Worgen Wizard because of the alliteration, but Worgen Mage. And I think that I find that an interesting combination. Yeah, actually, there's a question I have. As an, as an author and being able to write about, um, uh, you know, the, these various characters in this game, um, how, how do you feel whenever you see those characters you've written written about in the game that, you know, like you, oh, think, you ran across Varian or someone like that. Oh, I think it's terrific. It's it's, it's so cool as I said, oh, look, there's one of my characters. And uh, yeah. it's very nice where they've included them in the uh, in the storylines. And uh, so it, 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 it's interesting to see who they've included in the story, in those plot lines there. I mean, I, one of my personal favorites uh, is uh, Trag High Mountain, the uh, Torrin from the uh, Sunwell trilogy, and then from the uh, the serial in, in the Legends volumes. And uh, you know, he's a, he's a Torin Death Knight, and it was it was nice to have him included in the game, and because uh, he's he's a character I would I would love to go back to again, and uh, it's nice that some of my characters have really made their mark, and I'm very pleased about that. And uh, it's always nice to hear when people tell me that they've enjoyed them too. Right, I think that uh, I think that's I think we're about out of time anyway. So um, that's all the questions that, that we have. So. Uh, it, it was great talking to you again. I uh, hope to see you here in Kansas City. Are you guys going to BlizzCon? Uh, the, the, still working on that. Scheduling is a question at the moment there, but um, you know if I'm there, I'll be sure to let people know that I will be. So, Because uh, it's, the, it's the readers that, that uh, allow me to do what I enjoy doing, and I appreciate them a lot, believe me. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Thank you, Chair. Yep. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Yep. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.